Not for the first time, there's turbulence in Australia's aviation industry. The airline business is no place for timid people. It eats businesses up. Service continues at the check-in counters of Rex, the country's largest regional airline, with behind the scenes customers and the airline's 2,000 workers are asking what's next. Well, this is disturbing news. It's really deja vu. We can't let this be a bonza. Rex failing would be absolutely catastrophic for rural and regional Australians. News that Rex is under the weather hit the stock exchange on Monday afternoon when trading was suspended pending an upcoming announcement. That uncertainty is fueling fears of another airline collapse after Bonza went into liquidation in July. All eyes are on the Prime Minister. Well, we are concerned about Rex. It's an important regional airline. Uh, what we will do, though, is examine uh, any proposals. Now is the time to actually have those conversations, give those guarantees, before um, potentially the worst happens. If Rex is teetering, then it is going to be important for the government to step in here, whatever that looks like. There has to be support. You can't let 2,000 more aviation jobs go out the door. Rex, founded in the ashes of Ansett Australia's 2002 collapse, has long been considered a cornerstone of regional Australia. Former independent senator Rex Patrick sat on a federal Senate inquiry into regional air services, says Rex is too important to fail. Regional airlines are the lifeblood of these communities. They provide connection in terms of education, uh, medical, uh, business and indeed family connections. When you take away uh, that connection, we end up seeing professionals leave. Any disruption in these uh, regional airlines uh, will cause prices to rise, force more people onto country roads. It's a bad thing. Rex plays an incredible role in connecting the seven million of us that don't live in capital cities to the rest of Australia. Over a third of Rex's work is actually in providing access to medical services. Its fleet flies dozens of routes to and from rural and regional Australia. More recently, in 2020, it received millions in government subsidies, safeguarding it from the impact of the pandemic. And then in 2021, made a bold move to capture a slice of the lucrative capital city routes in and out of Sydney and Melbourne, going head to head with Qantas and Virgin, which sparked a price war between airlines. According to aviation analyst Ian Douglas, this is where Rex's problems started. The capital city market entry was too small, too timid perhaps, and at the same time their regional presence is uh, supported by aircraft which are now really getting towards the end of their lifespan. Rex received substantial government support with no conditions attached. One of the things that I expressed concern about was that no conditions, so that Rex, for example, moved away from their traditional role of being a regional airline into flights, for example, from Sydney to Melbourne. But Shadow Transport Minister Bridget McKenzie believes Qantas pushed Rex to the brink when it started flying more regional routes. You don't have to look too far to see the retribution that Qantas has enacted on Rex over time when Rex has sought to take it up to them on their more profitable routes. As soon as Rex announced that they were going to take it up to Qantas and seek to provide more competition on the Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane, other, other capital city routes. Uh, guess what? Qantas decided to suddenly fly and make a loss into those markets, uh, therefore putting Rex under financial pressure. Qantas declined 730's request for comment Independent Senator Jackie Lambie is a regular Rex flyer from her hometown of Burnie in Tasmania. If Rex goes under, is Qantas going to maintain those flights going into those regions that is flying in right now, today? And that's what we want to know without pushing, without pushing those airfares up any further than what they are out leaving those regional areas. She says the Australian airline industry is too consolidated. 
here we go again, trying to run the smallest airline or one of the smallest airlines out of the air, and that's exactly what they're doing. It is a duopoly out there between Virgin and Qantas, and they do not want anybody else flying in their air zone. More recently, Rex has been battling itself, an Australian Securities and Investments Commission investigation over corporate governance issues is set to be the trigger point for a boardroom coup in June, when longtime executive chairman and major shareholder Lim Kim Hai was ousted and replaced with deputy chairman and former federal transport minister John Sharp. It looks like one of those classic boardroom dramas where you've got a significant shareholder now sitting on the side saying, I own the bulk of this business and now I'm not happy with the way things are being run by the remaining directors. Back in February, the airline's half yearly results showed Rex was hemorrhaging nearly $1 million a week. What's not clear is the extent to which governance issues or industry pressure is behind the recent problems. Ian Douglas doesn't believe Rex is going the way of Bonza. Nothing like Bonza at all. Uh, Bonza's collapse was really flying very expensive aircraft with a distribution system that relied totally on an app on a phone that didn't even touch the Melbourne Sydney market where the value is that had aircraft that were generally way too big for the rural routes that they were flying. Ian Douglas says if Rex is put into administration, it's likely to survive, like Virgin did in 2020 when it axed its low-cost airline Tiger. My bet is that we will see Rex back to looking like Rex looked before, which is flying the regional operations uh, throughout rural Australia very effectively, and that on what I've seen today, probably not flying the jet services on the East Coast. At the moment, Rex is limiting bookings on its website. Its customers are looking at other options. Its workers remain in the dark and its shareholders glued to the ASX tomorrow.